Welcome to Emotional Sobriety. Welcome to Emotional Sobriety. Uh, we took last week off because I had an interlude where I fell off a cliff, but I'm so happy to be here today. Um, Literally, and- he fell off the cliff, man. Right. And we got together and we decided that was a permissible pass. He, he, could, he could miss right. f- f- falling 20 feet off a cliff. Yep. And that w- it was not an interlude that I expected. And, no. uh, and you know, I, what I'll say to start about my emotional sobriety is that I had a lot of plans for the holiday, for Thanksgiving, uh, for work, for uh, my creativity, my writing, uh, for friends and family. I had a lot of plans going into that hiking expedition um, that now all of a sudden are like completely up in the air and disarray. And the first, some of the first thoughts I had uh, just crumpled onto some rocks with blood spraying out of my face <laughs> was just disappointment and how I wasn't going to be there for certain people. And I uh, wasn't going to be able to enjoy like basically like my, the best laid plans just completely uh, eviscerated. And I think like emotional sobriety is about facing what is being in alignment with reality, um, a- accepting as a given that there will be disappointments and kind of like readjusting to the best uh, attitude possible in light of things not working out the way that you had expected them to be. And I'm in the middle of that right now. Um, I've definitely had like uh, most of my attention has just been occupied with like trying to get better. You know, there's a lot of pain. There's been surgeries. Um, It's been uh, just havoc in the day to day. So it's, it's somewhat easy, I guess, at this point, I'm I'm guessing there's going to be more later of just like, the, more of that disappointment, more of that, like, uh, you know, uh, resenting myself for not having better footwork or uh, for not appreciating the danger of climbing around on some rocks uh, on a casual hike. But life isn't something that you can uh, plan and expect to a certainty. And this is this is what I'm facing right now. And so uh, I figure with you guys now on the podcast, um, I'm in the right place to unpack some of this stuff so uh how about you guys <laughs> how you guys doing well, let, let me before before we go to us guys i just want to say right in the middle of that you gave one of the best descriptions and explanations and definitions for emotional sobriety that i've ever heard and there's you know there's all number of ways of doing that but but when you listen back when you're editing when you find that thing you i i was gonna say you you take that out you you wrap it up and 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 hold on to that because that that was a beautiful description of what emotional sobriety is uh, and then, and then you got into the ways that you still can can beat yourself up, and uh, we will we, we will uh, uh, know that there are listeners who who also heard that, and we will address that before the end of this this uh, um, podcast because um, I have that sign on my wall that says says the essential rule is never never judge yourself judge an earlier version of yourself by what you know today. And uh, you're, you, you know, you, you, you simply were having a nice time. You made, you made a mistake. You didn't, you're not doing anything to the rest of us. And you told me that very thing recently when I was feeling guilty about being gone because I had cancer. Thank you. Yeah. And I, I'll just jump in and just say my, when, when we decided that challenges was the, the thing, it's like, it's patience for me. It's, it, it's 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 this is this has been a, a long ordeal of my my recovery from from this cancer treatment i am doing better the truth is i'm doing better my energy is better i'm get, i'm getting you know i'm doing everything right and and they're telling me uh, i'm coming along just fine uh my last i've got some scans now that say they the first scans say there's no sign of cancer uh one of the things i try to remember when I'm being, when I'm bitching and moaning about the treatment, you know, is, you know, the alternative would be, I would have cancer. And so I need to remember, I need to remember that, uh, that this, this is, and I tell this to people about recovery all the time. Don't choose to do something and then act like you're being forced to do it. Mm-hmm. Cause, cause with recovery, we do that all the time, you know, you know, we act like somebody's tell, making us not drink or, or making us do this or, or that and go like, it's your choice. You know, we, we may be laying out some guidelines here for you, but you're choosing it. And so in this case, I need to remind myself that I choose this and I do still choose this because otherwise I would die of cancer. 
so so the truth the truth is um uh, it's going great for me uh i am i am i know i'm an ex uh, historically an extremely impatient person uh and i'm really challenged with that and we'll talk about I'd like to, i'd love to talk with you guys about some of that while we're talking today because because patience is a big challenge for me wow fantastic you guys i mean look that that is the theme of this show today is what are the challenges we've been facing in our own in our personal lives and how are we applying some of these principles that we've been talking about and teaching and trying to integrate into our own lives and you know the theme comes back that you started with a long time ago tom and that's practice mm. And we are getting a lot of opportunities here, <laughs> individually no. and collectively, no to, shit. No to practice. Shit. <laughs> so I don't ever want you to say that word again. <laughs> I don't ever want you to mention practice again. I think you evoke some kind of God of emotional sobriety that said, okay, well, Tom was saying practice. Let's give these guys some opportunities to, to work. I think that might these... be the so source of the curse. I, I think that <laughs> might happen. So I, 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 next time I meet, I'm going to bring Sage into the, to the room with us and try to, right. to get rid of some of these evil spirits. Good, 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 but good. you know, they're not evil spirits. They're life. I mean, is, mm. is, is, you know, and, and the big tendency that I have is when, stuff happens like in my life the divorce and 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 the other issues that i've been confronting in terms of dealing with that whole scene that's gone down for me is is the first thing it's just so hard to wrap my head around the reality of it it's like i felt like i was in shock mm. like how is this happening how is this possible and then i say well how is it not possible i mean right. you know it's like it's the other side of that equation, you know, it's, it's, it's life does happen. And, and like you said, Patrick, I mean, you know, things change in a heartbeat for us. That's what happened to me. All of a sudden I'm married and all of a sudden now I'm being served with divorce papers. And like, I had no clue that it was coming. Jess was very, very, you know, secretive about it and, and clandestine and until, until, the reality hit and then the reality hits and i like what you said patrick because i echo what tom said is that your description of emotional sobriety was very much right on right you were hitting that bullseye mm -hmm. on the target because when you said that it's really the kind of relationship we have with reality and that's what it really is is like are we having an appropriate and honest relationship with reality and right. while that sounds so simple it's so difficult. Yes. I mean, it is so challenging to accept the things that I don't, you know, God grant me a serenity to accept the things I don't want to accept. I mean, right. right. And the ability, you know, that's, that's the challenge I have in this whole situation I'm facing. And I feel myself gradually wrapping my head around the reality and it's taking some time. And with that shift, one of the things I'm experiencing personally is I'm no longer trying to change like Jess's mind about things. I'm no longer trying to point out where she's wrong and what, you know, she should be doing to protect the girls from the pain they're in. I realize, you know, I'm surrendering. That's, that's out of my control. And my trying to control that and to try to manipulate that is not serving any purpose and, anything it's just throwing more gasoline on the fire for me it just keeps the conflict going and i've backed off now for about the last three and a half weeks and it's it's better you know i i'm not so sure what it means for her but what it means for me is there's a lot less conflict around um the family and around the girls and the girls seem to be enjoying the that there's not as much tension in fact very little when we're together um, so that's a real plus at this particular point in time. And one of the things that I'm really practicing is keeping my mouth shut, especially when I know I'm right. That is, uh, I, I want to speak to that. Cause what you just, that's what I was, was making notes about what you just said is such a huge thing for us to, to take out 
<laughs> and generalize and put it into the principles here. And that is that is the the, the right what's right and, and what works and and what uh and what does not work. And so part of the, what you described before you even said you even said the, the word right, no matter how right you felt about what you were saying, and I'm not saying you know, I'm not you know, you were I'm not even saying you were you were claiming objective rightness. It was just how how, how strongly you felt about you were right about it. You 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 came to observe that it was it that your initiating those conversations was creating more problems. It was, cre it was creating turmoil. Was contributing to things not resolving, and you stopped doing it based on the fact that it didn't work, regardless of how right you feel, or how right you are. And right. that is a tough let go. That, oh my God, it's that's been... a, that, that's tough on our our, our egos, our self esteem. Oh. That's a tough one. But boy, that is so important. Well, it, it is. And, you know, it's 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 back to that, you know, experience that each of us have in our own ways. You talked about it. You have to surrender to the reality of the experience you're going through. Yeah. I mean, that's part of it. And that's what you described, Tom, is that you just mm -hmm. said, my God, this is what I'm doing. And I'm choosing to do this treatment and mm -hmm. whatever the side effects are and the consequences are, I'd rather be doing that and giving myself a chance to extend my life than not. Mm -hmm. And, and that surrender portion of, of acceptance becomes such a critical moment. But I'll tell you, man, I go, you know, you it's almost like you got to wrap me and change and drag me to acceptance. <laughs> I, I don't I don't go easily. I mean, no, I fight, I man. I, I fight ever to the last moment. My God, I just, you know, especially with the Marine Corps background in me, my God, I'm going to take that hill no matter what right how many casualties we're going to take it you know it's like it doesn't serve me in this situation uh, alan I, I always have that guy on my committee that just 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 is surrendering and then just comes running back in the door and goes but just a couple of more points yeah I mean, <laughs> yes i got that guy too get him out of here <laughs> i got that guy too we'll surrender but wait before i do yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just one more or, thing uh, I need to say. <laughs> nah, I'm, I, I am going to shut up, but. If, you know, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'll back off What in a minute. <laughs> it's like, hey, Alan, uh, hopefully this isn't too far afield, but when you, I, I was thinking about your Marine Corps background before you just brought it up. And um, like that concept of surrendering control to regain control, that paradox. What, 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 were, what are some of your first memories of like, understanding that and reckoning with that and kind of integrating it into your recovery and your kind of life path. Because like you said, your understanding of those things was so radically different before you got sober. And, you know, wow, but yeah. I think it dovetails a bit with what we're talking well, about. It does. Oh, yeah. I think it's Perfect. not only just the Marine Corps, you know, attitude, but I think our culture, our culture has the prescription that surrender is, is, is defeat and that and it's associated. No one wants to be a loser. And that's kind of where it goes. I mean, we, you know, I don't want to be a loser. I mean, that was drilled into me. And so for some reason, surrender meant I was a big loser. And so for me, you know, being a winner meant winning all the time. I mean, and that's such a ridiculous talk about unreasonable expectations and, and expectations that set me is in an adversarial relationship with life, with my relationships, with myself. I mean, it's a huge one. You know, and it took a while. It still is. Look at Patrick. I I get that at certain levels, but I'm getting it at deeper levels. I mean, as, yeah. as we say, this is one of these things is that that and that it's the good news and the bad news. I mean, the, the bad news is the, is the work continues to go on and on and on. And it has to go on and on and at deeper and deeper levels for us to do to us to evolve and develop the kind of maturity that we want you know, in terms of the being able to transcend our over dependence on environmental support and learn how to finally be more self supporting. And once again, that doesn't mean being an, an island unto myself, mm -hmm. it means taking responsibility for me reaching out to you, Patrick, and saying, Hey, man, I need to talk. I'm going through a tough time today, instead of hoping that my friend will just reach out to me when I'm in a bad place. And my friends do. I'm not saying that doesn't happen. I've got a lot of wonderful friends that, that do when they ha can. But ultimately, it's my responsibility to reach out for that support. Mm -hmm. 
So, you know, I think that's what that's what we're talking about here is that the good news is that that as we do this work, we do get to a deeper and deeper, deeper level. Um, Ernie Larson even like to call it stage three recovery. Mm-hmm. I see emotional sobriety as kind of the umbrella that stage one, stage two and stage three recovery occur under. That's right? a great way to look at it. You know, I, I really... I really do. I think that those are just, they're nested in within this big umbrella. That we're building, we're it's building all the time. We're adding yeah, to, we're it's adding not moving to. from one, it's not moving from stage one to stage two to stage three. No. It's, it's adding stage two to, and stage three. Stage three, and we f- are. Listen, before we go further, you, you, there was, I, I was able to mine a nutshell out of what you just said. And, and that, one of the things that I've, I've been working with my nutshells lately, and it's like the, these little one liners, um, uh, that hopefully have some wisdom in them. And one of the things about it is they, there's, they, they, they usually clarify something and this one was great. And, and this, you, you, you came really close to just saying it exactly. Sur- surrender does not necessarily mean defeat. Now, see, because a lot of times in our world, our language gets these words that become synonymous and and language itself creates a problem. If surrender is all, equals defeat, then I'm not going to surrender. But if I can re- be reminded, no, surren- surrender does not necessarily mean defeat. And, and in the cases we're talking about, surrender surrender takes us toward, toward winning, not losing. It's funny, I think about Uh, our podcast sometimes in the context of the social media landscape and the influencer landscape and of course which parse winners and losers and there's an aspect of you know your shilling content and uh, you want to provide these kind of aspirational uh, avenues for people you know like how can how can I watch or consume this thing and be a winner right and like sometimes and especially now uh, having fallen on my ass literally um <laughs> uh, I, I i get doubtful about like well what's this thing now that i can give to people that they're going to want you know what's the uh what's the carrot that's going to want that's going to want to entice people to follow us on our journeys when you know i uh when i just kind of like royally took a spill but i suppose being, like by the way being real being authentic uh, that's uh, that's part of the answer to the question uh, that's what yeah that's what comes that's what comes from you and from your experience Right on. Yeah. And, you know, uh, one of my favorite ever Tom isms is anybody could have a good day on a good day. And yeah. uh, I was doing pretty good, you know, right up until the fall. You know, I've I've had a recent breakup that's taken a toll on me. But, you know, like as far as, you know, my work ethic and my, you know, physical fitness and my emotional mental fitness, you know, I've been on it. And uh, now, you know, those things are kind of let's just say they're in distress, but, um, but you know, like if I, if there's some way that I can communicate to people that like, we're all about uh, meeting life where it is and really just dealing with it as it comes life on life's terms, like you guys always say, um, teaching people about maybe not having a good day on a bad day, but just kind of like withstanding those bad days. And, uh, and yeah, and then that authenticity is like, kind of like the deep, the deeper, stronger stuff. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, sometimes it's, it's just a day yeah, around, around the holidays. I remember in, in 12 steps, I learned this a lot. A lot of people who really dread, uh, Thanksgiving coming up or it's a Christmas. I, I used to, I remember hearing the, the, the old timers in AA when I was first in AA, that's just another 24 hours. That's all it is. Another 24 hours. We'll, we'll be here at the meeting. Come on into the meeting. And I love the idea because again, what we look at is, is we, is, is the reason we, the reason we are in pain a lot of times is because of the meaning we attach to everything. You know, it, it, we can't just snap our fingers and all of a sudden not have meaning attached to Thanksgiving or Christmas, but we can address it. We can look at it and realize you know, we can say it's a, it's just another day, and I can lower. And what what Alan and I talk about all the time is lowering the, the power of lowered expectations, bringing those expectations down. It's like you know, I'm, I'm still I'm still eating out of a tube, uh, so my my expectations for Thanksgiving dinner are way low. 
you know it's like that so so the idea is somebody says you want to come to thanksgiving dinner i say you know hell no i don't want to come to thanksgiving dinner you know and so but i'm but i'm but i'm used to it i'm ready I, you know i think there's football on thanksgiving so so you know i'll be okay but in your case it's it's like yeah understanding that uh, some days are just days and you just got to do what you got to do and what you're doing as as i am doing as alan is doing every day we get up we're healing a little bit more the, the, the message we can you get i know you guys get the same message from people you know as, as i get from people is whether I can feel it in the moment or not, I am moving in the direction of being better. I am moving in the direction of healing. You know, my wife always reminds me, don't don't measure from day to day. Measure by weeks. I mean, look at look at yourself a week ago or even a month ago. How how are you doing? And and you can really start to see growth that way because one of the ways that i learned that i can really make things hard for me is i'm measuring and, and you talked about some of this last last uh episode uh alan if we if we measure if we're measuring today by yesterday you know that's not that's not a fair it's not a fair way to measure it not at all not at all no because there's a lot of two there's a lot of two steps forward and one step back kind of things and and uh we're all going to experience those kinds of things no, and we are, and I think that that's what I'm hoping that our listeners are going to appreciate is that, you know, we're all going to experience unexpected things in our life. You know, life is going to present us and face us with many challenges, and it's not those challenges that define us. What defines us is our, our response how we respond. to them, right? Yes. How we respond yeah. to them, and and there's a big difference between being able to respond, which in, you know, Gestalt therapy, we call being responsible, mm-hmm. <laughs> having able the to ability respond. to respond, yep. right, versus reacting to them. And for me, when I'm not emotionally sober, I'm in a very reactive mode. You know, there's no thoughtfulness going on. I'm reflex, reacting, reflex, I'm reflex. automatic, I'm yeah. anxious, I'm depressed, I'm whatever. And anything that comes out of that space is going to be very reactive. Um, you know, so this has been very interesting. You know, one of the other things that's happened in this challenge that I've had is, you know, I, we've talked a lot about the betrayal that I've experienced in, in a lot of different ways with this whole thing. But our dear friend, um, Tom, John M. Odeo, in his book, mm-hmm. Love and Betrayal, which, you know, mm-hmm. I've read, I've I had a session with oh. John, by the way, too, I mean, to help me with some of this stuff from based on, mm-hmm. on you know, just how well he understands this stuff. Mm-hmm. But, you know, one of the things that I've finally started to see is that when he says in his book, there's no betrayal that occurs in our life where there is not some self-betrayal also accompanying that betrayal. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for a while I was thinking, well, how is that? And I started to see it, 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 it's can be very subtle at times. Mm -hmm. It's, it's like, you know, like in my relationship with Jess, I remember years ago going to her and saying, you know, I just feel like something's changing between us that you're just not that into me anymore. And that maybe you've changed your mind about wanting to be married to me and stuff like that. And she would reassure me and she'd say, no, no, that's not how I'm feeling. That's your insecurity. And so I started to look at my insecurity. God, yeah, you know, maybe that's what this is. It's just my projection onto her and what's going on. But everything is not a projection. Sometimes a cigar is a cigar, Mm -hmm. right? It's not some symbol of something else. And what I'm realizing is that I had an intuition that some things were off and I didn't honor that Mm -hmm. and stay connected to that. I allowed myself to be convinced otherwise. You know, we could call that gaslighting, whatever you want to call it. I think it's an apt description of it. But but there's no gaslighting without my cooperation. Right. And I cooperated. I totally bought that whole thing on. And I asked her other very pointed questions about, you know, things that turned out to be true later on. And she denied all of those through that whole period of time. And so what I'm realizing is that instead of staying grounded in, 
what what I was sensing is the truth. I erased myself. Right. And I adopted her idea, partly because, if I'm honest, I didn't want to accept what that truth would mean. Mm-hmm. That we need to we need to be we're in serious trouble here. We need to probably, you know, end this relationship, get a divorce and what that means with the girls. And I can see the pain that they're in and what's what's that's causing them. And there's a good reason why I was, you know, hesitant about wanting to jump into that barrel. Right. Of uh, uh, or that pot of oh. boiling oil. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, right. I can understand that. But but still, the denial of that reality didn't serve me. At all, it set me up. However, yes, you looked at your you looked at yourself first. That was your response to what she said and to your distress. Is that like, let me see what I can look at as far as my own conduct. Well, that's how we're wired, and that's how I've learned in the program. Is I've got to step back and say, you know, what, what, what do I need to take responsibility for here? But I think and that's a good right. good call. It's a good thing, but it it also. It also, I can, I can let myself be manipulated with it, though. See, that's the other side of that. So it's a fine line that I have to walk in terms of. Well, and this is it. where this is where we got to look at this. So when so when John says, you know, we're participants in the betrayal, it's like we need to all, all of us, you, me, Patrick, and and the people listening. That is not an invitation for our shed yeah. monsters to come in and judge That's us. That's right, right. It's like that is not it. We're just looking for what happened so that we can learn and move forward, you know. And and I don't know if John John would agree with this or not. You can you you probably can represent him better than I can here. But the other thing I think of way way we participate in betraying ourselves is we hold on unconsciously, deeply. We hold on to to the belief that we either can or should be able to predict the future yeah right yeah we i mean it is amazing how often i i I stop clients in their in the middle of a sentence and go like you you know you would have to be able to predict the future to make that statement you know and you cannot predict the future it's like and you know each one of us each each of our situations makes you know did any one of us predict any any of the three things that we're dealing with in 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 the large, large way here nope you know we didn't do that and it's like it, you know it's good for us to learn like you're you're talking about Alan it's good to, for future reference what you know what, what what did i miss in my own process here so that i can take that forward what learn from the past and get the hell out of there you know it's like you got to learn and get the lesson but it's like be sure be sure that, that this is not an invitation to beat yourself up it's well stated and that's a fine line between taking responsibility for our part and not blaming ourselves for yeah our it's about being tough loving to ourselves it's like come right. on man let's look at yeah. what we got yeah, yeah. but i'll tell you and what it's it did you know what it's done for me it's part of the some of the things that are coming out of this is that you know um dr miller the, the one of the therapists i'm working with to help me through this situation he says look al the, the pain that you're going through is not optional at this point in time he says mm. You're embracing it. You're grieving. You're allowing yourself to cry when you need to. You're expressing yourself. He says, these are all great things. He says, but we want to make sure that the suffering is going to lead to some emotional wisdom for you. So that's what you're saying, Tom, is go in the right. past and learn as much as you can from it. And what that means is, is become wiser, mm-hmm. right? Turn the wound into what Richard Rohr calls a sacred wound. Yep. You know, be able to process this thing that helps us grow into what we can be. And what we can be is is amazing, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. You know, that's mm-hmm. what's kept me in this line of work for, for five decades. I mm-hmm. just love the discovery of all these possibilities. Sometimes I hate the pain and suffering that I go through to get there. But I'm telling you, it's, you know, what I find is if I stay connected to that experience in a therapeutic way there's going to be a lot of wisdom that comes out of this stuff yeah there, there's actually i have i have a uh, one of those little nutshells here it says you learn learn from failure and it becomes success yeah there it is man there it is and that's what we're yeah. all doing guys yeah. we're all doing it and i don't thank god for our relationships and the community mm-hmm. that we've created 
the three of us and the larger community that we're a part of on Thursday nights and stuff and that we've created and, you know, the outpouring of love and support. And it's happened for you the other day, Patrick. I announced that you were trying to fly. Mm-hmm. And that mm-hmm. uh, didn't work. That experiment didn't work well. Right. Yeah. Well, let me say something just briefly about the community. Um, I had five years of recovery. I have five years of recovery and counting going into this mishap. And um, before I found some sobriety and started this process with you, Alan, um, my uh, number of contacts had dwindled down to like you can count them on one hand, maybe the people that would even notice if something happened to me because I had so systematically shut out human contact uh, as a requirement of keeping my addiction, my addictive behavior going. But in that time, I have spent so much time cultivating relationships and kind of like populating my garden with different, you know, kinds of people and, uh, and things. And so it's been like, so nice just to hear from all these people to get messages and, you know, on social media and phone calls and stuff, like all kinds of people that like, I did, I, you know, I, I wasn't even really aware of how much regrowth there had been, um, since, uh, I had started to kind of clean up my life a little bit. And it's really been, even though like, I've been in a lot of pain these last few days. It's been really hard for me to reply to certain messages. I haven't picked up a phone call here or there just because like, I've just felt too much like shit. Um, I'm very motivated when I can get out from under some of the physical stuff here to double down on all of those efforts. And, you know, like it really like the fellowship and the community um, that is uh, bound with emotion, the emotional sobriety journey, you know, has really like been breathtaking. So Cool, man. I'm glad to hear that, Patrick. That's, That's terrific. beautiful. Well, listen, you guys, I do have a hard stop here in a couple minutes, so um, I'm not going to see you guys before Thursday. Well, but Thursday night, we're still going to have the Thursday night meeting. We're going to have it on gratitude. Um, and uh, and then we'll continue our discussion of discerning our emotional dependency. The week after that, I'll talk about the emotional sobriety inventory in terms of how to up unpack our disturbances so i'm excited about doing that again but i just want to say you know when i step back and think of the things i'm grateful for you guys are on my gratitude list right back at you man you guys too uh you guys have been such a big help since i had this injury and uh thank you so much i love you very much and listen to all our listeners we are so grateful that you guys continue to show up for us and Send us support and your love through all of these trials and tribulations and ordeals that the three of us are experiencing. Welcome to the days of emotional sobriety. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) this is going to be a soap opera. I think we should turn that in the first five minutes or so, Tom. We got to write a little like the old radio script. Get one of the radio voices to do do that. I I like it. I like it. Increase our listenership, you know. That's right. Yeah. Well, if we're gonna be if we're gonna be a soap opera, I could use some hair and makeup on this side. So, uh, well, right. no, no, yeah. no, no, you can't. You got to look like this because that's part of the story. Oh, right. Yeah. I could be. I could be like the amnesia episode. This yes, is like when I wake up and I'm somebody else. Yeah. That's right. That's it's almost. Oh like yeah, you of, have to have amnesia. Yes, of course. <laughs> got to emotional what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tinge your life. Tinge your myth. Cultivate your narrative with whomever you